like things easy peasy. So when I need a few things, I go to Walgreens. Because schlepping my way through the grocery store when all I want is milk isn't my idea of a good time. Good thing Walgreens is just around the corner so I can pop in for essentials like milk, paper towels, and toothpaste. Easiest errand ever. Walgreens, at the corner of Happy and Healthy. Now with Card, Cottonell Toilet Paper is $3.99 with in-store coupon and select planters nuts are two for $8 or $4.49 each. Love Talk Radio. I'm in beast mode. 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 Beast mode. Beast mode. Beast mode. I'm in beast mode. Beast mode. Beast mode. Beast mode. I'm in beast mode. The Kings people talk is who we are. Who we are. I yell it, man. I'm kind of working on my raw. While the world tries to persecute me, the line of Judas with me. Nothing you can do to me. To me. If he be lifted up, he'll draw all men. Cover by his blood. Hashtag all in. I'm suited up, man. I know you hear the armor clanking. Walking, fighting against the spirit. No time for fleshly banging. No time for fleshly Ain't got no time for the naysayers. I can do all things. Tell them strengthened by my savior. Heal the sick, raise the dead, and make the lame walk. But you gotta fast and pray. I tell you, dog, that's kingdom talk. I've been saved and I ain't turning back. Going hard for the kingdom till the day the sky cracks. Like eternally. Man, can you picture that? Paid for by the cross. Daddy boy on his back. The kingdom being preached. See the sea and coast to coast. Power by the Holy Ghost. I'm in peace mode. I'm in peace mode. I'm in peace mode. What's going on, good people? Welcome back to another edition of Kingdom Talk Radio. Man, you know who this is. This is your humble host, Tony Dyson. So before I go any further tonight, man, giving honor to God, whom every day I make the head of my life, to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, from whom all blessings flow, to my pastor, Bishop Anthony Taylor of the New Hope Worship Center, located at 1651 Redmond Road, where Sunday morning service goes down at 1245. Come by and see us. Also to my wife and to all of you, man, who continue to listen to Kingdom Talk Radio week in and week out. What's going on, everybody? Hey, got a great show lined up for you tonight, man. The name of the show is Holy Ghost or Holy Hoax. So uh, just about to address some things, man, you know, and uh, put some things out there for discussion as well. Uh, also, don't forget, man, you can email me, Kingdom Talk Radio Show at gmail.com. Uh, follow us on Facebook at KT Radio Show and also on Twitter at K Talk Radio. All right? So I think I got most of that out of the way, man. So what's going on, everybody, man? I hope you, that your week is blessed, man. Um, mine is. I mean, just steady getting opportunities coming my way, man. So I'm just thanking God just for who he is uh, as we continue to push on. Don't forget, man, if you're streaming, uh, feel more than free to call in, 347-996-5129. I would love to hear your voice, man. Uh, or, you know, if you're not near a phone or you got to get off, you know what I'm saying, you want to stream it on your way home, all you got to do is go to blogtalkradio.com slash Minister Tony Dice tonight. So without further ado, man, I uh, just want to welcome you all once again into the show on tonight, man. Uh, hey, if you're tuning in right now, man, if you're streaming, tag somebody, man. Let them know that the show is on, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just quickly, man, just thanking God just for who he is, man. I mean, just for all the blessings that continue to uh fall down on me and my life, man, my wife, my children, you know, just for everything that's going on. This this right here, this show that I'm doing tonight, and, and I want to say this early, and I'll repeat it, man, uh, a few times throughout the show tonight. The show that I'm doing tonight, man, is by no means um, looking to nitpick, looking to... Uh, 
cause division or, or whatnot, man. But what the show is going to do tonight, man, is going to provoke thoughts on just why things are the way that they are, man. If if as God is the most powerful entity in in all realms, why? Oh man, I, I want to make sure I say this right, man. Uh, why are his people in his kingdom still such a mess? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I don't mean everybody, but you know, hey. So we want to discuss a few things tonight, man. Uh, I did schedule a longer show. You know, not saying that I'm gonna need all the time, but like I said, man, feel more free to call in, discuss whatever. And we gonna get down to business tonight, man. Um, and as I stated, man, this show on tonight, man, is just, you know, what's been on my heart, man. And you know, we just go jump right in. I mean, cause there's no introduction needed. There's no, uh, there's no right or wrong, right or wrong way to bring this topic in. So we we, we just go grab the bull by the horns, man, and and, and go. So over 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 the last few years of Kingdom Talk Radio, man, you all know I always try to address the things and and the tough issues, uh, the tough happenings and what's going on. I always try to you know make sense of them and bring them together, man, just so we can agree or agree to get to disagree as God's people. You know what I'm saying to continue to uh, learn and 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 in and, and, and a decent environment, you know, or take things away. You know what I'm saying, and and I'm always looking forward to learn something myself. But there are so many avenues that we can start off with with this topic tonight: Holy Ghost or Holy Hoax, man. L- let's just start with the current state of the church. And once again, man, um, as I move this topic forward. It's not a rant rave, you know, type deal, but it's more of a concern because I consider myself to be saved. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I consider the fact that if I was to die right now, that I would see God's face. And if I was to die right now, would I die in a perfect since I would say no, but every day I strive to get better. And for for many of us, I, I believe we're all in the same boat. Um, and, and and once a week or you know whatnot, we we go to this building that we call the House of Prayer. Now the thing is, people, is that. If the only time we are acknowledging God or and try to pray and seek His face is in the house house of prayer, then eh, we might want to rethink how we are walking. I mean, I do understand that we have distractions and things going on in our lives and obstacles and and whatever. But if the only time that we acknowledge God is when we step foot in the sanctuary, man, something's wrong with our walk. What is it that's going on in our lives, and what in the world are we doing that we can only acknowledge God when we walk into the house? And many of us, as we step foot into the house of prayer or church or, you know, I've talked about that before because I find it impossible to go into something that we are, but y'all know what I'm saying. Um, we, we, we look around and many times while we're in church, we become distracted. We become distracted on who has on what and how long it's been since you've seen this person. And because you've seen this person's status on Facebook, you've seen that they were in trouble. You knew that they was coming to church. That that's irrelevant. That is very irrelevant and besides the point. 
And then, you know, we we, we get sang to, to the choir, and then, you know, the pastor comes up, and I'm going to put a pen right there. One of the things that I've liked about Kingdom Talk Radio since I've been able to broadcast is that I have the freedom to talk about things that are ruffle feathers. And it's not an a, 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 uh, attempt of discord or, you know, but it's, attempt, it's, it's just merely an attempt to provoke and invoke our thought process. Christ stated that upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We're at a point in time in the church right now to where the standard of reaching, teaching, and discipling has been lost. We 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 are filling services in time with what we think people want to see and what we think people want to hear. And now it's gotten to the point to where service has become a spectacle. Now, I'm not saying all churches and I'm not saying all members and all leaders, but however, there's an epidemic going on. And unfortunately, it's just as if the body was sick, the natural body, in order to treat the sickness and to begin the healing process, the body as a whole needs to be treated. We had a point in time to where that many people of God have chosen ministry so they don't have to work. And once again, people keep in mind that I'm not saying all. The Bible teaches, but wherefore by their fruits you will know them. We've Entered into a point in time to where I look at it like this, people. I, I look at the stores. That some stores, when you walk up to the store, there's a there's a blatant sign outside that says "No shoes, no shirt, no service." And apparently, those rules and those guidelines have been established by the owner of that facility. Now, in God's house, all are welcome. It states to come as you are. But the thing is, is now people have gotten caught up in coming on how they want to be. And when I say that, I mean that they're not presenting themselves to God as they are with a repentant mindset with a repentant heart they're coming to God and saying to God accept me how I am and there's nothing else that you can do but accept me this way and then when people attempt to stand up and hold God's standard accountable the world tears them down So now it's gotten to the point to where people come to church as they want to be. Now, I do understand that you cannot catch the fish. I'm sorry, clean the fish until you catch it. But however, there are some lakes and ponds that we just might want to stay out of for the time being. Confusion is running so rap rapid in the house of God right now. We have fights, we have adultery, we have thievery, we have all kind of things going on in God's house right now at this point in time. 
And it seems like that when one person wants to stand up and acknowledge that God is telling the people, get your house. Matter of fact, get my house in order. That everybody else just wants to sit around and look and snicker and murmur and talk. But we fail to forget that one day the king is coming back. We're at a point in time now that in church that some pastors are more concerned about membership and tithes than it is about producing disciples and giving people an edible word of God. Now, notice when I say an edible word of God, see, God's word, when it's broken down properly, will meet you right where you are, regardless of your faith level, regardless of your knowledge. It will meet you right where you are. The church now has just become a place to where... Um, people that have no heart or desire for people can get paychecks just for doing nothing. To where the actual leaders of the establishment are not looked upon, and that now we're at this point in time that we're hosting up pastors on a pedestal, and now we're following them instead of following Christ. And it's the same that nowadays people that we cannot tell, or I'm sorry, some cannot tell the difference between a motivational speaker and those who have the anointed tongue and word of God. See, this is the thing. Raising your voice in octave or two will generally get a response, and that goes back to the beginning when God created everything. So because everything was created with the word, everything's going to respond to vibrations in the voice. That's why our vocal cords vibrate when we speak. That's why sound comes. So when a person is behind this pulpit, if we're not careful, we're able to get an emotional high. And now what happens is, is when we get an emotional high, we become addicted and attracted. And when I say attracted, I don't mean anything other than just being drawn to that particular person. And people of God, if we're not careful, if that person draws enough of us unto them, then guess what? We're not drawing nigh unto Christ. So now what begins to happen is is that that person exalts themselves. They give us emotional sermons just to keep us riled up. But then when we walk out of that church home and get smacked by that demon back in our houses on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, we have no power because we don't know what was written. We don't know what God's word states. We don't know the power that we possess. We don't understand the process. So now come Wednesday or Thursday when that demon is speaking in our homes and tearing at our spirits, we don't know what to do. But if anybody asks us how was church this Sunday, they say he sure did preach, though. About what? I don't remember. Church is supposed to be the meeting place and meeting point for where we could go and get proper knowledge and understanding to continue to live but unfortunately a lot of leaders have gotten a price tag attached to their ministry can you believe that some preachers and some pastors won't even come to your church without a thousand dollar or greater retainer now I know about you all man but 
My Christ didn't do nothing like that. At this point in time in the world, man, there are billion dollar mega churches. And I mean, hey, if God has provided the way, God has provided the way. But on the flip side of the situation is that there are many people that I know of personally that have a heart for God and his kingdom. And have to get up every morning and make that decision. Because they don't have a title. Because they're not well known. But they have a genuine heart for the people. They don't have the luxury of driving fancy cars and wearing tailor-made suits and whatnot. But still are just as, if not more anointed than some that's running around misleading us. Now, I do understand that the Bible teaches us to let the wheat and the tares grow together, that God would do the separating. But the word also says you try the spirit by the spirit. The word says I would rather for you to be cold or hot, but not lukewarm. People of God, we've gotten to the point to where the show in church takes place when... The preacher voice raised a few octaves to get people emotionally involved. And I do understand that because, you know, in our soul, it houses our will and our emotions and all that good stuff, that, yes, it is possible to get us emotionally evolved. However, as we become emotionally evolved, there's a spiritual consequence if we're not careful. See, the thing is, is as we become most emotionally involved, you got we have people that want to shout their way through and around and over and back and forth the church. And, hey, if that's what the Holy Spirit has you doing and that's what you feel like you need at the time to get your breakthrough, by all means, go. But however for some, it is the show just beginning. And when I say for some the show is just beginning, it's that people will shout a hole in your carpet and cut you out right after church. Have no intentions on adhering to what God says, but however, want to pass. Now, people of God, I mean, I'm, and, and I could be wrong, and that's why the phone number is there, 347-996-5129. I could be very, very wrong, but this is the thing that I look at. And if I'm wrong, people, I am just wrong. I've seen people catch the Holy Ghost, if that's what we want to say, we catching it, because I don't understand that if you, how can you catch something that's supposed to live on the inside of you, so it's almost impossible for you to catch the Holy Ghost. And I find it very suspect that when someone goes up to start shouting, someone says, oh, they caught the Holy Ghost, but how can you possibly catch something that lives on the inside of you? But now the spectacle in the show has now began to where they're shouting this way and shouting that way. And people of God, one of the things that that really vexes me at times, and if I'm wrong, people, I'm wrong, and I'll take it. We say God is a God of love. Holy Spirit does things decent and in order. But you got to think sometimes to where how many of these people are shot or just having an emotional outburst. See, because, I mean, and I'm not trying to question the Holy Spirit. I'm not trying to question anyone who's trying to get their big breakthrough. As I said, go. But one of the things that vexes me is that a person start shouting and they clear a whole pew. They're hitting people in the face and falling over people and this, that, and the other. And, and, and I'm like, wow. What kind of God? Now, this is just an observation, people. What kind of God would allow a type of spirit 
to come over or come into me that will possibly have me cause harm to another one of his people, another one of his children. And you get some people that start shouting in church, and I'm telling you, you will feel like that you are in the Royal Rumble. So now I'm asking, wow, crazy. We've gotten to the point to where our leaders of the church have given away their backbone and just allowed. Now, see, there are certain things that only God can do that the Holy Spirit has to do. He's put us there. To speak his word and to sow the seeds and hey, once you've spoken the seed, you keep it pushing. But there's some people that are just so caught up on fame and notoriety that, see, the thing is, is that when we lower our standards that God has given us to rub shoulders or rub elbows or to get hurt by the next person, we have just now been bought. We've now lowered our standard. And this is the thing, people. With the word says that we have to worship God in spirit and in truth. I can't tell you if you're saved or not. That's a question that you're going to have to ask yourself. I can't tell you if Jesus Christ is your king or not. That's something that you're going to have to answer for yourself. But nowadays, there are too many people that are putting on the mask of ministry in order to deceive, in order to get rich, in order to get fame and notoriety, and don't have the first inclination about your salvation, your soul, or your well-being. But what tends to happen is people like that talk. I can't say, I can't even say teaching. They like that talk that's soft and subtle and everything's going to be okay and God's got your back and Jesus will take care of you. And But the thing is, that soft talk not addressing the sin and the problem <laughs> is setting you up for failure. The word cuts coming and it cuts going. And there are many times that you will be speaking the word of God and it'll come it'll boomerang you, man. It'll come right back to you and convict you. We find ourselves now in the circus because now the hierarchy. Y'all, 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 I, I, can I be honest with you? Sundays, and, 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 and I say this loosely, Sunday is a small piece of the puzzle. Because we ain't living right, walking right, talking right, thinking right, and acting right. Sunday, it's like you not eating Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Then all of a sudden on Sunday, you want to pull up to Golden Corral, man, and eat everything on the buffet. You're going to be spiritually sick, man. You're going to have spiritual indigestion because your body is like, well, wait a minute. What type of stuff is this that you haven't put in me all week? We ain't even thought about God because we was turning up. Now we want to come to the house and do the Yeah, it's not going to happen, people. Now, I don't know much about the human body. But I, but I, but I can. The small research that I've done, it has proven this: when you put too much in your body at once, your body cannot fully get the nutrients that it needs effectively. So what happens is, is that as you continue to eat 
the same stuff in large quantities and large amounts, your body cannot absorb all the nutrients. It begins to pass it. Now, as your body begins to pass these nutrients, since it hasn't been able to be broken down properly, there are certain times, my God, somebody is getting ready to get this one here. There are certain times that when your body cannot process the food and it gets stuck into the lower intestines, you get a blockage. And now when you get that blockage, it doesn't matter what else you put into there. If that blockage is not removed and what happens, and we know what has to happen when the blockage has to be removed. You got to go from the other side and handle some business. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of us are trying to cram so much into us in one day that we have a spiritual overload because we have blockage people. We have to take our time and fully observe, uh, not observe, but fully uh, consume the word of God, man. But now as I was stating is that now that people get their emotional high in church and now they want to have this outburst and and, and and the thing is is now at this point in time as this outburst is happening a life is supposed to be changed in the process. Hmm. But yet you see the same person shouting Sunday in, Sunday out. And you see the next evening on Facebook to my they bay and I'm talking about they boyfriend. They shacked up and cussed two people out, posing with blunts and bottles. I mean, y'all, look, I wasn't saved overnight, man, and I do understand it. But there has to come a time to where some evidence shows. We can really take a break, man. Give me some water because I'm kind of thirsty here. We'll be right back with more Holy Ghost or Holy Hoax. And wonderfully made, but underappreciated. You feel you've been sweet and patient, still not one of us peeps to greatness. You're not content to watch go by, so you get up off the shelf and stop your life. God tried to woo you, but the fruit seduce you, and that's reduced you to walk by sight. Approach my dreams that are not your type. To buy the lie, you drop your price. Went to sleep, wanting to be loved. Woke up to a world that's not so nice. See the boat, just watch you lead again. Step off the lot, appreciate. Watch you take the beat, the place, and lick they chops like piece of cake. So they feed your face, to lease your face. To rent your love and see how sweet it tastes. Destiny adultery, cheat your fate Pay with cash, not check to keep they mate It's actually abusive, and I'm after you It's after the usage, and the aftermath of the disaster Aren't you worth more than half of what you get? With every knock on your belt, guess what? Stock could just fail The devil kicks back when he's got you to steal And puts you on the rocks to hell Is there a way to come back from that? Yeah, but it's not in yourself Cause if your appearance is clearance, you need God to decide what you got on yourself <laughs> Your merchandise ain't worth a price You should not be for sale, let's go! Do you know your word? Do you know your value? Your life been perfect, even though we ain't have to. You're worth more than right now. You're worth forever. So don't take this right now. And give up your treasure. Don't sell yourself. 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 All he knows is that the world's so dark and it's cold. When it rains, he got a nice box for a heart and a soul full of pain. See, he never had love, so he never felt peace. Till he joined to McCain, and he went out and bought him a piece. And when it comes back, anybody can get it, cause it'll be nothing but him. He's out a couple of bullets, leaving several individuals. Critical, crawling, hospitable, spit it, truly different, and fill a mist. Never the one to be tested, he got to get him before they give me mentality and a melody. Everly, cause the casualty, battery, energy, his adrenaline, puppet, rapidly, family left. So he ain't innocent. Young king, you belong to the Elohim sitting on the throne. Do you know your worth? All you gotta do is scream in the zone and you can be anything that you want. Hey. Tough boys who cut toys and bang cars like they buff boys. Get tossed in that lake of fire where they scream loud, make much noise. And that's after that jail house where they break down in that smell cloud. Just hover over that steel block and it's empty up in that mailbox. No letter door, no commissary. That time fly to your mama buried. Them pain caps from that game pack. Some ranch girl. They kinda scary. But you ain't really gotta leave the life. 
like you were a pen and give it all the cracks, turn it around now. Do you know your worth? Do you know your value? Your life in person, even though we ain't have to. You work more than right now. You work forever. So don't take this right now. And get up your treasure. Don't tell yourself. 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 What's the going rate? Can you be purchased because you're not going to wait till you're going to date? Having sex ain't the only way you can fornicate. Don't sell your birthright for good when you were born for great. Hey, this world is bitter cold. You won't up your value or lift your soul or get the gold. It's a sick of pro or with tricks and kicks on the strip of pole. You're better than that. Don't let what they did to you strip it gross. A twist in that Jesus Christ. He was hit some wet, nailed and rolled to support his kids. I need you to get the check price paid. Hey, man, that was my boy, King David the Vessel, with price tag, man. You got to know your worth. Coming back, man, with more Holy Ghost or Holy Hoax. If I have any pastors or leaders on uh, whether you're live or streaming, whatever the case may be, I, I want to put out a personal challenge to you. My personal challenge is this. Always uphold the integrity of the kingdom no matter what. See, there are people coming, there are people speaking, there are people watching our Facebook pages, there are people watching our tweets, there are people, you know, watching our videos on YouTube, and they're just waiting and lurking for their chance to try to get in. It's coming. Didn't the word tell us it was? Doesn't matter how anointed we think that we are, the time is coming. And it's sad that the entity of the church, man, it's like, my God, we have put so much emphasis on the establishment that we've forgot to establish. And when I say forgot to establish, we've forgotten to put God first in all things that we do. And I think that it's a very sad spectacle for Sunday morning worship service where teaching is going on and feeling it's going on and the church is empty. But just a few hours later, there's a singing program or a concert that's being that's charging saints of God twenty dollars at the door and it's filled. It's packed out with singing. I'm sorry, with standing room only. I think that's preposterous, people. We can fake the funk in front of people, but the word says that our sins will always find us out. We've got, we got to get to a place in time to where I understand we follow our leaders, our pastors, and our evangelists and whatnot, but our faith has to remain in God. So once we make idols out of these people, then we've lost sight of who God really is. Because that person on that pedestal is now our God. The Bible states to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. But nowadays it seems like that money, music, and ministry, which actually, if you're not living the life, if you're not walking the walk of a kingdom mindset, then I don't understand how you can have a ministry. I mean, people, I, oh my God, I know of people that don't even have a covering, a church home, but they have a ministry. And I'm like, okay, fine. I mean, people, we, if we're calling ourselves, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put it to you like this, y'all. Like the Muslims and, and the Jews and whatnot, they have standards that, that, that they uphold, man, and, and they take it serious. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, is that we have to get to a point, man, where this thing is real to us. People are going to doubt. People are going to not care. People are going to mock. 
But the thing is, is who are you in your heart? Are you staying true to who God says we shall be and what we should be and what we need to be? We got to kill the spectacle of the church, man, to where the show takes place. See, because after the show stops, we realize and we learn that the devil is real, man. And he will test you. He will taunt you. He will see if you really stand for God. And the thing is, people, is that when we leave church and we come back to our homes, we're that we're still that example for our children. And if we're not living that life for our children, guess what? We can't expect them to live that life either. We can't beat our kids for cussing if we cuss around them. We can't beat our kids for talking about people if we talk about other people around them. We can't beat our kids for always want to be in somebody else's messes when we're just as nosy, if not nosier. We can't beat our kids for trying to put themselves in grown-up situations when we talk to them like they're, like they're grown-ups constantly. These young people now, they're growing up so fast, man, that, and see, this is the thing that we have to look at, people of God. A lot of our kids grew up on Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy and Easter Bunny, and we, on Christmas Eve, we would make them go to bed, and on, when they lost the tooth, we would make them put it up under their, I mean, we would make them. And now here it is, Sunday morning, and before school and before bed, you know, we make them say their prayers. We make them go to church. And and the child may recollect, like, well, wait a minute. You made me go to bed because you told me that Santa Claus was coming. You made me put a tooth under my pillow because you told me the tooth fairy is coming. Mom and Dad, you're making me go to church and you're... Making me do this and making me do that because you tell me Jesus is coming. Just like you've lied to me before. When are you going to tell me the truth this time? And people of God, that is an awful place to want to be in. My kids been doing it for years, man. I, I don't have that type of time. We got to get to the back to the point, man, to where churches are producing disciples and leadership. See, we refuse to believe in the structure of the church. See, see, see a lot of churches don't even have a five-fold ministry, man. Don't believe me? Each time you go up and want to ask them what it is. And I'm, I'm going to leave that to that. <laughs> holy ghost a holy hoax huh? I look at people like What's his name Benny Benny Hill Benny Him Whatever his name is I was seeing videos of like People coming on stage And he was touching them And the people were falling all over One another And, 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 and he would Put something An invisible object in his hand And throw it into the crowd It's supposed to be like a glory bomb And, and people would just start convulsing And, and things like that And, and, and y'all I'm, Y'all know me man I mean I, I believe and No 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 I know nothing is impossible for God Nothing But however It's like Okay Why isn't he in the hospital then healing but these people are worth billions of dollars, man. We have to get back to the point where it was every man taken for his own need. Like when Jesus set the 5,000 down and fed them with the bread and the fish, every man took according to his need. Nobody got greedy. We're at the point in time in church right now that everybody is just salivating at the mouth, waiting for their chance to sing the solo, or waiting for their chance to lead this or lead that, but in their life, the devil is leading them. It it, it, it really irks me when 
you meet pastors and people out in the street and they're just as arrogant with their nose up in the air and so are their members, but nobody wants to address it because he's Bishop Reverend Deacon Dr. Johnson. It doesn't matter what his name is. It really doesn't. Because you're not carrying yourself in that type of manner. It irks me when ministries that are wholeheartedly seeking the kingdom and pushing and have statutes and standards come up and, and, and try to mingle with people of prestige. When I say of prestige, I mean people of prestige. I'm not talking about God's anointing. I'm talking about people have gave them prestige. But yet because you don't have a title in front of your name or you're not introducing yourself with a title as they have done, they really don't want anything to do with you. It's sad that when churches that are right around you spend thousands of dollars to be, to, to bring in people to prophesy to them when they have a man of God that is perfectly able to, that is in their lives constantly. People of God, we're at this point in time right now to where God is not pleased with the way we're doing things. We're not exercising our dominion. We're not understanding what our true purpose really is. But you know who does? The enemy does. And if we look around the world every day, he takes another one out. We've forgot we, we've gotten so caught up on the four walls that we've forgotten about the four corners. We're so concerned with deep pockets that we forgot about discipling. See, because when you disciple someone, their life changes. And they understand that it's not just a game. They, they they understand that our God is not this invisible man in the sky. He is the only God that is sitting in the firmament of heaven, and Jesus is at his right hand side. I hear a lot of people talking about white Jesus this and white Jesus that, but on the same token. <laughs> They have no standards of morals for themselves. And I'm just going to be plain and frank with you people that if me believing in, I wish I could see video, I'm doing a little quote, quotation things, white Jesus makes me a fool and so be it. See, because I've seen my life change. i felt his power. I've heard his voice. I've seen what he can do. But the thing is, people, is that we're making church seem so Hollywood. There, there are shows on now, the pictures of L.A., and, and they're showing the glamour and, 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 and the money and this and the other, but they don't show when you can't sleep at night. They don't show when you have to be on your face and on your knees praying to God. They don't show the pastors that, that forsake their now, and, I, and I don't mean for sleep, but in the middle of the night, they have to leave their house with their wives to go to minister or to go and see about people. So the thing is, is that the church is not respected. God's house is not respected. It it it, it really it really really. Blows my mind. And I was talking to Pastor Chad Mitchell about this earlier today. To where if a person doesn't have insurance or registration or bad tags and they're driving and the police is, you know, in the vicinity, you don't even have to be around them, just in the vicinity, they tense up and get nervous. Then, then, then if there's a police car behind them, they get worried that they're about to pull, get pulled over. And then when they get pulled over, they don't have the proper documentation. Then they have to accept the judgment of the police officer. Then they have to go to court and be sentenced 
by a judge. And the thing that really turns my mind topsy turvy is that we're more wary about a man that breathes and bleeds just like we do, that will be judged by the same God that we will be at the end of the day, that we give him more power than we do God who is the ultimate judge. The law says don't speed, we don't speed. The law says don't litter, we don't litter. The law says this, we don't, but God's law says. And we totally throw it out the window. Wow, people. We need to have a life-altering experience with Jesus, man. And for some of us, it shouldn't take a near-death experience. See, in the process of me playing it around this show, Holy Ghost to Holy Ghost, that's one thing that I noticed that a lot of these churches are preaching is grace. That I'm a sinner saved by grace. That Jesus died for my sins and my sins have been forgiven because I have grace. (laughs) <laughs> it's a trap. Even Paul said himself, so since grace is a balance, should we continue in sin? God forbid. God forbid. See, grace is not a get out of hell free card, people. And for any pastors that are listening, I'm telling you this. If you're not teaching, hell is real. But there's a difference between educating people about heaven and hell and trying to scare people into heaven. Those are two different things. But however, if you're not adequately and you've been deemed in hell responsible for leading the flock and you're not teaching them about judgment, if this person goes and dies... If you've only taught them about grace, it's on your hands. I said it. It's on your hands. Grace, once again, is not a get out of hell free card. See, when Jesus died on the cross and he took the sin of the world upon his shoulders, we have to understand that There's a difference between sinning and practicing sin. See, sin is something that, you know, it may happen, that you acknowledge it, you repent, and, you know what I'm saying, you're good. But when you live in a lifestyle of sin that you're totally, totally, totally just not adhering to God or his word, then you're sinning. Jesus and grace covers sins. It doesn't cover sinning. Think about it. People are at the point in time right now to where money, money. I, this is, this has been a serious question for me for a very long time. How is somebody going to charge me to to come to my church to preach or to do a seminar, whatever the case may be, that a lot of these churches have, in Jesus' name? I don't recall Jesus ever taking up a collection plate, people. And I understand some people want to start talking about tithes or whatever the case may be, but okay, I hear you. I hear you. One of the biggest issues that we have right now in church is envy. We have artists that envy other artists because, you know, maybe they got a little buzz, whatever the case may be. And we got churches envying other churches because they see the membership of the foundation growing. And then you got people envying other people because they wish that they were where they were in life. But understand this. 
We all have a purpose in God's plan, man. So why are you sitting there trying to watch somebody else's lane? You need to watch the traffic flow in yours. We got to get to the point of getting out of it. Man, if you really want to tell the truth, a lot of Christians are the biggest backbiters, the biggest uh, gossipers in the freaking world. And that's why a lot of times a lot of people suffer in their sins because they don't want to tell anybody else because of friendly fire. Yeah, and I and I'm saying this with me. I I I was frustrated, man, a few weeks back, and I've been frustrated for a minute, man, because it just seems like I felt like the world is not getting the picture. Like God, what do we have to do? And finally, I got my answer, people. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. See, too many times we get wrapped up in what man's standards want us to be. And then when man's standards conflict with God's standards, you're best to choose God. You cannot go wrong. Seek him. Seek him. See, now we're at the point in time in our lives, man, that man is dictating how church is supposed to be, and God has been taken totally out, and that's why people's lives are still in shambles, and there's cancer and, and all kind of other stuff running around, poverty, you know, uh, uh, all kind of stuff running around in the church right now because we cannot seek him. For God is... It's coming to try to visit and to rest and rule and abide with us in the sanctuary corporately to heal, to deliver, to set free, to bring peace upon, but it's time for offering so we move on. Seek him. There are times to where things may not be 100% in your life. But you got to seek him. Ask yourself this question. Who am I dedicated to? Church or God? It can't be both. God is always going to come first. And then comes my family. Real talk, people. People got I I I I get frustrated when those people who know nothing about Christ make a mockery, whether it's through videos, whatever the case may be, and they don't understand, and they're telling you or telling us that you know Christianity was forced upon us through slave masters. Well, how do you explain Ethiopia? And if I'm not mistaken, Ethiopia is one is the only country in Africa that was never colonized. But there are Christian churches there. We're at a point in time, man, to where we gotta we gotta believe in something. I choose to believe in Jesus, man. Whether you do or you don't, no matter who I encounter. <clears throat> but the thing is, is that now we have to point in time to where whether to address things like grown people we just stuck our head in the sands. There's nothing wrong with correction. There's nothing wrong with correction. There is nothing wrong with correction if it's done in love. But now we've allowed man's standards to dictate who we're supposed to be. We've allowed man laws to dictate what or isn't right by land. This is a trip right here, man. I seen a picture on Facebook uh, just over the weekend. And the picture stated, we are declared dead when our heart stops beating. But a baby isn't declared alive from his first heartbeat. 
Because after that first heartbeat, that baby can still be aborted and it's not considered murder. My God. My God. We are in a land right now that people can just love on themselves and do what they want to do. And as I said before, they don't come to church how they are. They come to church on how they want to be. And you're like, well, how how, how does that make sense? Because they don't want to change. This is who I am, church. This is who I am, God, accept me. But it's not the way that God made you. God did not make us to be sick, even though there's sickness around. God did not make us to be living in poverty, even though there's poverty around. Romans 22 states, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have to renew our mind, man, of who God really is. They've taken prayer out of our kids' schools. But they're trying to make unisex bathrooms. What part of the game is that? That my child can't play in school, but two boys can hold hands. Hmm. There's something wrong with that. People we have to understand that as we were baptized, that another baptism also takes place. It's baptized, baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling y'all, man, when that Holy Spirit dwells within you, man, my God, it's it's it, it's 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 invigorating. <laughs> that you can walk around with a smile on your face no matter what's going on around you. That you can hold your head up high and continue to call on God, to continue to look to the hills from which cometh your help. That when you fast and pray and that every day that you're killing this flesh man and you're feeding that spirit. But for God, it's, 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 the Holy Ghost It's not the author of confusion. And I'm telling you right now, if, if you're in any type of leader position, get your spirit man right. See, so many churches are caught up on membership and money nowadays that a lot of times people go unnoticed. People stop going coming to church, and it's like I, I had made I had made a joke uh, a few months back on Facebook, and I said this: You want to know what type of church you you go to? Don't go for two months. It's the first phone call you get is going to be for your tithes or for your well-being. Then you'll know what type of church you go to. There are plenty of men and women of God, man, that are after God's heart, that are looking forward to building the kingdom. But the thing is, nobody wants to deal with them because they're preaching sin. They're talking about it. They're educating. You cannot, you, people, you cannot fight an enemy that you do not know. We've allowed so much to step foot up in God's house, man. And I do understand that it's going to take the Holy Spirit to do the cleansing. But, hey, at some point in time, you have to take a stance. And this is my thing, man, that if we don't take a stand, we're held just as responsible when the trumpets blow. When Christ comes back, man, and all his glory will help responsible as well because we stand for something through persecution and all. And I hate, I would hate to be before God. He says, well, where were you? What were you doing? <laughs> People of God, I'm telling you, the, the holy hoax, man, the churches that are just out there just so just to mislead. There's now a church of Satan out in California. 
There's a show on TV called what is it called? Lucifer. All around us, we're being distracted from what God really wants. And if we don't realize it, then we're being programmed. We're being programmed, people. We have to be able to stand up and tell our kids, no. You don't have to accept that. Husbands and wives, if your marriage is under attack, you need to hang in there and get with some people, man, that's going to be able to see you through. Don't give up. Give in to Jesus. People of God, it, it is very just perplexing, man, to see good people suffering. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those who have put their life in the ministry and don't ask for anything in return. But them are the first ones that are rejected. Them are the first ones that we look past and look over. Them are the first ones that we forget about. What do you stand today? Are you operating in the Holy Ghost or the emotional high of a holy hoax? See, that emotional high, man, is going to wear off at some point in time. And you got to be able to respond to the devil where it is written. Because you're not able to respond, you're going to be consumed or you're going to be used. And I'll be doggone that I fought too hard and, and cried too much to be used at this point in time, except for anyone but Jesus. People of God, we got to get to the mindset to where we can actually do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthen us. That we don't have to be who the government states that we will be. We don't have to be who the teacher says we would be. We don't have to be that box that people have closed us in. My Bible teaches that we should be the lender and not the borrower. But too many of us are out there faking the funk and it's time to start weeding them out, people. And I ain't saying you got to disrespect them. But it's time that we understand what this walk is really about. And then we got to start coming together in unity, man. All these different denominations has us divided, has us fighting amongst ourselves. It has us fighting with ourselves. <clears throat> but yet we want to talk the same God. Absolutely not. My prayer is that God hears us, that we will turn from our wicked ways as, a, as individuals, as a nation, as a people, and get back to who God wants us to be, that we hold his standards up front. That we hold his standards, man, as a badge of honor and be proud, man. If you look at certain clubs and things, you know, there are certain standards that you must adhere to to continue to be a member. But the great thing about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he understood, hey, this person may break a bylaw, so I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and die for him. I'm going to be their advocate in heaven. So if they happen to slip up like a good neighbor, Jesus is there. I refuse to believe that we have to live life beneath our means. But if we just continue on with the show, that's how it's going to be. Our standards have been breached. Our living has been breached. Our faith has been breached. Our marriages have been breached. Our families have been breached. Our kids have been breached. Our thought process have been breached. Our lifestyles have been breached. Our spirits have been breached. When will we say enough is enough? But we want to go have a good church. We want to go clap our hands. Stump our feet, flip over the pews, make some corporate angels, then go out to eat and say that it was good. 
praise God for you all listening in on this evening, man. Um, I know there's a few on the line. I know only one has something to say if he wants to speak. Uh, my brother in the gospel, Pastor Chad Mitchell, are you there, brother? God bless you, man. What's going on? Nothing much, man. Just wanted to see if you had any thoughts or words on the night, man. Yeah, bro. I, um, you know, my heart is grieving um, in response to your challenge as a pastor. Uh, but more important than that, my heart is grieving as a child of God. You know, I I can't help but to feel the pain, man. Yes, it's. it's I just don't understand how we went from the upper room in the book of Acts waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit to we're just completely denominated, man. You know, we got all these denominations, and, you know, we we serve the same God. And, I mean, we're, we're saints, and we can't even agree upon salvation. You know, we can't even agree upon <laughs> Jesus is the way, man. You know, we... we we can't even agree upon, you know, how to baptize. <laughs> we can't even agree upon um, doctrines of the Holy Spirit. We can't, you know, it's it's just really crazy. Um, and it's just sad, man, because there's a lot of stuff going on, man, that is just not, it's not love, it's not compassion, it's not legitimate. You got, unfortunately, we got people out here that are, that are playing the grace card as if grace is what saves you, man, and I teach my church, you know, you're saved by grace. And what that means is grace is given to you as an opportunity to stay in the game and make the game winning shot. But grace doesn't, you know, grace doesn't give you the win, man. You know, Kobe Bryant, he had them championship rings he got. He had to play in them games, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, Christianity is not a spectator sport. You can't be that cat on the third string and you're going to get – a ring just because you're affiliated with a team. God ain't like that, and I'm I'm thankful for that. And so, man, um, I'm praying, bro, and I'm I'm in agreement with you. You know, my heart hurts, man, because of the state of our people. My heart is really hurting because of these things, man. And I know, I know that God is not pleased, man, and, and it's just not a good deal for um, the Christians, man. And I'm just blabbering right now, man. I'm just, like I said, I'm grieving, bro. I don't, I'm praying for <laughs> restoration. I'm praying for repentance. I'm praying um, that the church will come together, man, and preach the love of Jesus Christ. I'm praying that we will preach the hellfire and brimstone. I pr- I'm praying uh, that we preach, man, the whole full gospel and that's love, that's compassion, that's war, that's righteousness, that's peace. That's, you know, I mean, God ha- has many sides, man, and he and he he does many things in order to accomplish one goal, and that is that no man shall perish but all come to repentance. And so, man, I, I'm in agreement with you, bro, and, um, you know, I accept your challenge. I like to believe that, I, that I'm walking in that even now. But, um, you know, the camera's on it even harder, man, so... I thank God for you, man. I thank God for your platform. I thank God for you having the testicular fortitude to stand upon the precepts of God of the gospel of Jesus Christ, not wavering and not emotionally detached or enraged with uh, you know, the the lack of participation and or the lack of just blasphemous indoctrination with some of the stuff that our people are doing, man. So God bless you, Pastor Dyson, man. I love you, bro. Love you too, bro. God bless you. Hey, you know, uh, Pastor Chad said something very interesting, man. Um, and and I and I, I say this verse a lot, man. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all things will be added. And you look at people out there, man. They're preaching prosperity, but it's in the word. They're tr- preaching. You know what I'm saying? Wellness, but it's in the world by in the word by his stripes we've been healed. And the thing is, man, is that we can't be bitter. The joy of the Lord is my strength, man. The joy of the Lord is my strength, man. Never let him see you rest. 
always go as Rob would say and and, and Chad and myself would say, all in, man. As Rob would say, no days off. I thank you all, man, that continue to listen to this platform and I'm and I'm and I'm blessed that this particular show didn't come off as a as a rant and as a rave and as a I'm I'm mad at the world because I'm not. There's a difference between being mad and being disappointed. But the thing is is that when you're disappointed at something, what does it start? Change starts with it with, with you. To be a better person. See, a lot of us strive to be good people in church, but we don't strive to be that same person in life. Once again, putting on the show for the holy hoax, man. But y'all, keep your head up. Look to the hills from which cometh your help. And in all things, acknowledge God in all of our ways, all my, all our might, all our mind, all our hearts, and He will direct your path. God is going to place us in positions with people, man, that you don't have to compromise who you are. You just be who you are, man, and people will bless you just because you ain't got to fake the funk. You ain't got to act like that you can speak on speak in tongues on command. I mean, what is that? But hey, that's just me, and this is just Kingdom Talk Radio. We'll go before the throne of grace in prayer tonight, man. Um, my heart just goes out to everybody, to the women out there, man, to the men that are out there, that that that, that are standing your ground, that are not moving or being wavered, that won't be bullied. Into transgression with the world. Stand your ground. Because if anybody touches you while you're doing the Lord's work and standing his ground, trust and believe, they're going to have to answer to him. I thank you all, man. Uh, This show is really a breath of fresh air to me. It allowed me to get some things off of my chest. In a good way to where, you know, I, I didn't have to yell and, and, and be angry about it. But it's giving me new peace and new direction. And y'all just watch. Because God is getting ready to bring some people together and connect, man. And it's going to be like, oh, my God. Let's go before the throne of grace and prayer. Father God in heaven. On this day, right now, first off, we just want to say thank you. We say thank you for your son yielding up the ghost on that cross out there on Calvary. But on the third day, he rose from the grave with all power. He gave us back the keys to the kingdom and He ascended and prepared a place for us with you. He restored us back unto you. Lord, we just thank you for making the way out of no way. When our nights were the darkest and our days were the hottest, you still prevailed. You've covered us. You've kept us safe. You've strengthened us. You've challenged us, and you've allowed us to overcome. And, Lord, we say thank you. Lord, as I personally pray out to you right now, with a repentant mind and a repentant heart, and I just ask, oh, God, that you continue to show us the way, oh, God. If any have turned away from you, oh, God, we ask that they repent right now and turn back to you. Whether it be actions, whether it be finances, whether it be marriage, whether it be employment, oh God. Let us seek and serve you in truth and righteousness. Lord, if we're in leadership positions, God, we ask that you strengthen us, oh God, that our backbone becomes stronger, that we stand up and not compromise to show the world who you are. 
May we carry the torch of the gospel of your kingdom, O God, to the four corners of the world and not just the four walls of the church. May we help those that are in need. May we speak life into those who may be preaching. May we continue to lay hands on the sick and to see them recover. May we be continue to be called by your name as your holy ones. Lord, we just say thank you because you deserve it. You've made ways out of no way. You've brought us out of hills and placed us on mountaintops. Lord, we ask that every home be strengthened, every mindset be reestablished and rearranged back to you and your kingdom, oh God. That we return back to our first love, oh God. And you return us back to the joy of your salvation. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we ask that your church not be a place of fashion or or a place of of gathering just for socializing. But it be a gathering for the equipment of the saints, for the rally choir, who will answer the call to go forth and preach the kingdom. Thank you, Lord, just for who you are. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Appreciate it, y'all. I always know here on Kingdom Talk, man, if it ain't kingdom, ain't nobody talking about it. It's Tony Dyson signing off for the night, man. We'll be back with more Kingdom Talk on Blog Talk. Next Tuesday night, same time, same place. I'm going to tell you all like this, man. There ain't a song to end this night. Just imagine this. As I prepare to exit the air. When you lay down tonight and you close your eyes. Are you comfortable not waking up tomorrow? Are you convinced that you've done all that you could do, that your life is fully intact, to where when you stand before him, he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Or will he say, depart from me, worker of iniquity. That's it, y'all. I'm out. God bless you. Hello, caller. What can I do for you? Hey, I've been trying to lose a few pounds for an upcoming wedding, but nothing seems to be working. Have you tried a new LG G5 from AT&T? Isn't that a phone? Yes, but the G5's front camera comes with auto shot. Just smile and the G5 recognizes and captures the perfect selfie. And that burns calories? No, but taking pictures at the right angle is what it's all about these days. Oh, now you're talking. AT&T, mobilizing your world. See att.com slash LGG5 for device details.